Hey guys, Jerichon's 21 here. So, I know you guys haven't really got a face cam recently. As you can see, uh, since the last time you guys have seen my face, my hair's kind of grown. It's really long and shaggy. I gotta get it all cut off. So, anyways, a little bit ago, I watched a video Mystic Umbreon put out earlier this earlier today. I'll link it in the description of this one. This was er, earlier on uh, Sunday. I am recording this a couple hours before I'll record the Red Randomizer, and I was like, this is going to go up in two days on Tuesday, on one of the days where the Red Randomizer isn't going up. But he was talking about his Pokemon team that he would have if he had a team in real life. So, mine's a little out of order, but it is my team of six. So, we're going to start out with uh, number six, actually, by a counter. And it is... The, my mascot for the cha for my my Pokemon mascot for the channel and all in all it's a black Rayquaza. Now in real life in the Pokemon games, my inspiration for this is an Emerald version when I was younger. Emerald came out when I was still in elementary school, or uh, well actually I was pretty closer to what would be called middle school. I was pretty closer to sixth grade, but uh, the school I went to, sixth grade was mixed in with the elementary schoolers, kindergarten through five. So, I had been told by a couple of my buddies, you know, we could find, you could get a black Rayquaza if uh, you could get one. Well, this was back, at, I lived out in the country. I Back in those times in the country, I didn't have high-speed internet. I had dial-up. I'd spend two or three hours looking for information, and I couldn't find any solid info. So, I would spend, I spent a, mo a month plus, I think, I did. it's been a while, uh, over a month soft resetting for a shiny black Rayquaza. When I finally got one, I chucked the Master Ball at it, I caught that thing, and it stuck with me all the way to Gen 6. And at the time, we had the Pokebank, and I had stashed it in a Pokemon Y because my Pokebank was about to expire. Well, unbeknownst to me, I went out and I was doing some event with uh, the Police Explorers, and I had been told by my sister that she traded in my game. And I lost my shiny black quals on my best friend for so long. But in how I would encounter this, I want to think, uh, back when I was about in third grade, I was bullied a lot. I was small, skinny, easy target for bullies. And I remember uh, during one winter where the playground itself was uh, closed off due to the weather... We were stuck on the blacktop, and I, I had been cornered by three or four bullies that were beating the crud out of me, and I, I want to change that memory to being something good, and the memory I would, I, I can imagine Rayquaza coming down with all the snow in the back, and it being cold and everything, flo and all the snow falling, and me getting bullied and everything, I just can imagine Rayquaza coming down and protecting me shielding me and scaring off my bullies and at that point I wouldn't be able to capture Rayquaza I'd be too young I'd be 10 11 years old but at, Rayquaza would be there whenever I'd get lonely or scared and later on in life I would end up capturing it uh, I imagine being 7th 8th grade right before I left my home state of Indiana capturing the Rayquaza my dad would come, my mom would come in with a Pokeball and be, okay, John, it's time for you to do your Pokemon adventure. It's time for you to go out into the world. You can come and live with us. We're going to continue going. The rest of the timeline's the same. But Rayquaza would be my real first Pokemon. I would go out and it'd be a cold winter day and Rayquaza would be there waiting for me right across the railroad tracks at a at the dilapidated building that was right across the railroad tracks from me. And as I'd enter, I'd encounter my number three, which would actually be Gengar. Because in the town I grew up with, there's a burned-out, dilapidated, or there was a burned-out, dilapidated building. And the rumor was that a man had hung and killed himself in there. And that that is dark, and that is very tragic. This is a rumor. This is a playground rumor. So I, there's no validity to it. There's no way I can confirm or deny it. 
But because of the rumors, people would repeatedly say it was haunted. And I could see Gengar being in there, joking around. And it being one of my other Pokemon that just tags along with me, like Ash. Where I wouldn't have, I wouldn't actually catch it, but it would always be there with me. Gengar would be there with me, and I'd catch the Black Rayquaza, and the two would be there for me. Now we're going to get into the actual number one, my starter Pokemon, the Mon you'd start out with normally, but I wouldn't start out with this. It would be the Totodile one. In Gen 2, Totodile was my favorite Pokemon. I loved reptiles, and Totodile in the anime resembled me as a kid. I was hyper, bouncing off the walls, always happy, always smiling, always laughing, even though I had I'd been bullied a lot. And I... That's why I love Totodile. That and the fact that Feraligator is just one of my favorite Pokemon ever. And I can imagine, you know, I live in North Carolina, just across the street from where I live currently. There's a great big pond where the state had dug out a bunch of ground to build the new highway. I can imagine maybe one day coming out my ninth grade year, my or just recently, because we only just recently moved into this new house. I can imagine coming out and... One morning, just seeing an injured Totodile, or an injured, just, yeah, just an injured Totodile laying there in my driveway. And I run over, I scoop it up, and I nurse it back to health. And we go out on an adventure together, and I raise it up, and then, um, just evolves into a Feraligator one day during a battle. And uh, it being one of my favorite Pokemon. Number th uh with Gengar, the real reason I have it is it was one of the few Pokemon that I actually traded for its trade evolution. I usually didn't trade a lot, so when I got the chance to trade for a Gengar and get my Haunter to evolve, I did. And that's why Gengar would be one of my team members. It has good memories for me. That and just, it's a prankster like myself. Uh, number two is Dragonite. Now, in Gen 1, my very first Pokemon to ever reach level 100 in Red version, and again in Fire Red, was uh, Dragonite. I caught a Dratini, or no, actually in Red, I think you got a Dratini at the game corner. Either way, I know I did it twice. I did one from the game corner, either in Fire Red or in um, Red version, and then I did one with the Dragonair from uh, the Safari Zone. Now, I can imagine myself running across a Dratini when I lived in Tennessee for the year. I can imagine, you know, there's a small river by just down the street from where I lived. Or even better yet, I could, uh, I would think maybe I'd run across a Dratini while I was at school getting, again, bullied. Uh, it's, it's a big part of what molded me, was the bullying. And I can imagine... Uh, part of it being a bully messing with Dratini and me rushing to help it. And after that, me and Dratini just being good friends, being good partners. And uh, eventually I raised it up to be a Dragonair. And uh, we end up coming down here in my 10th grade year. Me and Dragonair and Dra and Rayquaza and all the other Pokemon that are on my team at this point are just chilling out at high school. And at some point, Dragonair evolves into Dragonite. And of course, he is just, he's a symbol of how my, traini my trainer method would be. Soft yet tough, you know. I'm going to be generous and loving with all my Pokemon, but... I'm going to be training them to be the best of the best. The cream of the crop. And number four is yet another dragon type. It is Salamence. And the reason it's on my team is, if you haven't noticed, a lot of my Pokemon that I have on here are either dragons or they're really hard to get. And that epitome, that reminds me of me. I work really hard to get things and get to places where I am. Now Salamence... I can imagine it being like me, Bagon smashing its head against boulders. When I was in elementary school, I used to hit my head against the wall a lot. It sounds stupid now, but to me, it was something I did. 
And I can imagine me running across to Bagon on the playground at school and just raising it up and just training it. And eventually, by the end of sixth grade, when I go out and I get my Rayquaza, Salamance, Bagon hasn't really ever been captured. It's just been raised by me. It's been my friend. It's been my... It's been my acquaintance, like Gengar is, after I catch a Quaza. But Bagon has evolved into a Shogun. And after I use it to help me capture my Rayquaza, it evolves into a Salamence. And of course, it wouldn't be my Mega, because my Mega would be my next Pokemon. And of course, I'd also have probably a Metagross uh, just somewhere. Because I've loved Metagross as well. But my fifth Pokemon is again a Gen 2 Pokemon. And it's really, other than Totodile, it's the only Gen 2 Pokemon I have on this list. And it is uh, Tyranitar. And it is. I remember in the Celebi movie, the Dark, po the dark Pokeball, the uh, Chaos Pokeball as I would call it. As I called it. Uh making Tyranitar evil and just the power that Tyranitar had and I love Tyranitar uh, I can imagine you know uh, on one of my camping trips when I was when I would go to a special camp uh, when I was younger coming across it during one of the camping trips out in the woods coming across that Tyranitar and uh just capturing the Larvitar and evolving it and getting it into that Tyranitar. And after that, just... And this team would be my my team. This would be my friends. I would carry them around with me. They'd all... Most of them probably wouldn't be in Pokeballs. I can't imagine me keeping a Feraligator in a Pokeball. I can't imagine me keeping my Dragonite in a po Pokeball. I don't imagine any of them being kept in Pokeballs. Sure, I might have them in them when I'm traveling around when I might be flying out somewhere to go and train or traveling on a train or driving or anything like that because I don't imagine me being able to keep a Rayquaza in my Dodge Dart <laughs> in the Dodge Dart I don't imagine that working very well but they would be out of the Pokeball they'd have spaces in the house where they can stay and sleep and ultimately this would be my team. I would have a Thralligator, a Dragonite, a Gengar, a Salamence, a Tyranitar, and a Rayquaza. And all of them have their own special significance to me. All of them, I either worked really hard to get them, they were the first of something. Tyranitar was actually my very first uh, fully evolved Pokemon in Gen 2. Because uh, when I first played Gold version, I played it with my sister, and me and her competed. And, um, uh, I never evolved Tonadile to Feraligator. Or no, I did evolve, uh, Feraligator, Totodile to Feraligator. But the Pokemon that actually swept my sister's whole team was my Tyranitar. I remember because she picked out Typhlosion. She picked out Cyndaquil. And she trained her Typhlosion so well that it just swept my... Feraligator. It just destroyed Feraligator. And I I had to switch into Tyranitar and it swept her team and just destroyed her team. And as a year I'm I'm two years, three years younger than my sister. No, I am two, it's two years. I'm two years younger than my sister. So beating her for the very first time was a big deal to me. It was something that I never thought I could do. And I did. And that's why Tyranitar is there. It's not because he overwhelmingly beats out Metagross. No, Metagross beats out him. Believe it or not, Metagross was my very first Mega. Uh, I never actually used a different... I never actually used a Mega until uh, Metagross. And in fact, uh, for my Gen 7 competitive team that I actually built for the Silver League Network... Uh, Metagross was my very first Pokemon that I actually made into a fully iv ev Pokemon, where I completely trained it up to be competitive. Uh, but yeah, this was, this was something that I never thought about. 
what would my team be like in real life? I always knew I'd have a legendary and maybe a scapegoat, but the Black Rayquaza has such a significance, and I doubt I'd ever even use it in battle. It'd just be my friend. It'd be there because it did something for me in the past. All of them have a sentimental value to me, and all of them are Pokemon that I love dearly. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, if you guys did, leave a like down, leave a like, and tell me in the and tell me in the comments, what would your Pokemon team be?